Previously on the Adventure Zone. I'm playing a human fighter named Magnus Burnsides. I love that. I'm I'm playing uh, a wizard. Okay. Uh, his name is spelled T-A-A-K-O. Are you naming your goddamn wizard Taco? <laughs> There's Taco. Daddy, what are you, uh, you're a cleric, I'm a, right? I'm a dwarf cleric okay. named Merle Highchurch. Over drinks one night with Gundren Rockseeker, he has to offer you what he calls the last job you'll ever need to take. So he has asked the three of you to escort a supply wagon to the town of Fandolin okay. with a, uh, a fighter escort named Barry Blue Jeans. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they are two dead horses lying in the middle of the road. Seems uh, fine. <laughs> Doesn't seem strange at all. <laughs> so you follow these drag marks uh, down the trail to the mouth of a cave. From the back of the hallway that Travis just ran up very valiantly, you hear the the telltale sound of rushing water. Tits. <laughs> uh, both of you get flushed uh, oh, no. in a torrent <laughs> of, of water. <laughs> Do we get him? Answering Goblin Taco. I got too haughty from the killing, and I, I, I'm joking. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus, not again. Don't come in here. It's private. What otherworldly horrors will the McElroys face this week? Let's find out together in the Adventure Zone. So the three of you are, have have uh, you have regrouped at the mouth of this cave where uh, Merle and, and Magnus just got flushed to. Taco, you just sauntered back to the mouth of the cave to rest up. Uh, I imagine you'll want to take a short rest to recover those precious HPs that you lost. Um, especially you, uh, Merle, if my math is right, you're like... One. You're one years old. I have yeah, one point. Up. One life point. Um, so you guys are going to take a short rest, and, and the way that you do that um, is you roll your hit die, which should be on your character sheet somewhere. Uh, you basically spend a hit die to to roll whatever your die is. It'll be a D6. Taco, I think you have a D6. You roll that. I have a add, D10. You have a D10. Oh, wow. Okay. So you, I want to say it's because I'm a human or a warrior. It's one of those. Okay. D10. So you roll that. Uh, you add your, your constitution modifier, and that's how many hit points you get back. I mean, I I gained back 13, but I'm only down 3, so I guess I just go back up to... Did you roll out. a critical 10? I did. Okay. Good good work. Hmm. Merle? Interesting. I I'm rolled wondering, a- should I be, like, documenting these things? I yes. feel like you guys never believe you, me. I'm just saying that you've rolled extremely well. I can't see what you're doing. And you're you rolled nothing but 20s shooting. last time. Yeah. Well, I'm rolling into the cardboard box. I don't oh. know if that helps. All right. I rolled an eight plus two constitution, so I recovered ten. Cool. And Taco, I don't think you've taken any damage, have you? I have not taken any damage, so I'm just getting some I'm just getting my my, my grounding. <laughs> just some R and R. Are we not gonna some... get the taco voice this episode? Uh, um I, we actually got a lot of complaints about the taco voice. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, really? Was, people said it was like really racist. And I don't know which race, race it just yeah. sounded it sounded like the kind of thing that would be racist. Well we'll see how the reaction people are so is. elfish. I'll probably go in and out of it. But I also wasn't I'm talking I'm not talking to you guys. I'm talking to Griffin, which is like God. I'm like praying mm, and in my oh, gotcha. when I pray I don't have an accent. It's taco only there? Can we talk to Taco? <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are you're healthier. Um, I don't know what your. I'm not going to keep track of your HP because honestly, I couldn't give a shit. Um, but but we'll just assume that you're you're right as rain. Uh, uh, Dad, I, you, I have a problem. Uh, question: Do we yeah. get like experience? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm keeping track of that. Y'all okay. are y'all are about halfway to level two. Sweet. Um, and you're going to get a lot of great stuff, and you're going to love it, and you're going to be better people. Because of it. The love the world. Um, so, so you guys get the impression that you probably shouldn't wait too long because they are going to notice that that one goblin is missing. You watch him very lazily float down the river, <laughs> super dead by you. He's moving at a snail's pace. Uh, That's comically, like sl- comically slow. 
Uh, so, so you guys have recovered, and, and uh, I'm assuming you want to make your way back into the cave. You can go back to town. You can do whatever the fuck you want to do. I'm I not say your dad. We, I say we go join Taco up on that overpass, Come because that's going to put us at a higher elevation. Okay, Come both on. of you... Uh, no, please say the thing that you're going to okay, say. Okay, let me say the thing. Come on up. <laughs> Why is that funny? Because of the racism? <laughs> There's no racism. Um, all right, Merle and Magnus, you guys can make a make a. Uh, it's, it would be an athletics check to just get up this rope. It'll be a very low check, though. Okay, I so rolled an eight. Am I rolling an eight again? What am what I rolling you, a twenty? You're rolling a twenty. Whenever you do a skill check, it's always a twenty. Okay, and then I add to it what? Your athletics bonus, which right. is on your sheet. Okay, I rolled a 20 and okay. a 4. You, oh my God. 24. You, you hover, just like <laughs> you were at the bottom of the thing, and then you were like at the top of the thing. And pe- everyone got super scared, because that shouldn't happen <laughs> like that. Uh, Travis, you rolled an 8? Yeah. Yeah, you got up there. You weren't as effortless. In fact, it took you 35 minutes to get up the rope. It was embarrassing. <laughs> it was like the first episode of The Biggest Loser. It was, it was like, like gym oh, class. Jesus. How, Everyone's why? at the bottom going, like, just give up. <laughs> You'll never do it. But you do make it to the top, and uh, everyone's really proud of you. Yay! N- not as proud as <laughs> Dad, who just sort of displaced himself to the top of the <laughs> I was the very proud of him. Yeah, let's remember that. Um, so, so from I look around. Uh, well, I mean, you have two directions. It's a bridge. Um, from, from one direction, you hear the sound of uh, rushing water, and that's about all that you can hear coming from that end. It's louder than the... Um, Louder than the stream that's below. Uh, the, the stream, by the way, has actually started to uh, dry up a little bit since the initial flood. Uh, and, and the water that you hear coming from one end sounds more like a, a waterfall or something mm. along those lines. From the other end, um, you hear some low voices talking, the smell of uh, uh, roasting meats uh, that mm. you might consider delicious. Or you um, might consider our buddies. Or you might consider friends. Listen, Magnus um, doesn't judge. So yeah, you have you have two directions. I yeah. say we head towards the meat. Okay. <laughs> if okay. there's one thing I know about Magnus, he loves a majestic waterfall. Uh, now the, the uh, if decision- I'm the tiebreaker, I say we go investigate the the meat, the smell, and the voices. How do you want to do this? Uh, who's the sneakiest of us? You see, uh, if going down that sort of uh, uh, hallway, it, it stretches in about. Uh, I, I mean, it's a it's a cave, not a man made thing, but it, it goes in the, the the channel. There goes in about twenty feet, uh, and you see some some light, some dim uh, fire fire light coming from there, and, I, and you definitely I hear say some I say whichever talking. one of us has night vision, taco or oh or yeah. I, I'll go. Uh, I think both look. of you, both of you do, except for Magnus. Nope. And I've also got stealth disadvantage. Clunk, 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 clunk. <laughs> yeah. I'll take. I'll go take a look. I have stealth disadvantage too. What's your stealth? Good. Quiet. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. It says plus two. Plus okay. two. Taco, would you go investigate? Gladly. By him, so you're you're sending him up by himself, while the two of you hang back on the bridge. I, I, yeah, I'll I, be. I'm, it'll be better by myself. Well, I'll yeah, because be, if, be if we're trying to be stealthy, it's always better to have smaller numbers. Okay, so if you're going to make a stealth check, I'm guessing just to move to the end of this channel and sort of peek peek around the corner to get an idea of what's going on in this room, you'll make a stealth check, and I will contest it with a perception check. Okay. So we roll, and then whoever wins wins the okay. the contest. So I roll a oh, nineteen, and two plus your stealth. Oh, so twenty one. Okay. You you manage to soundly uh, beat them. You, Stealth. You uh, you look around the corner into this room. You see uh, a fairly large chamber that is sort of split into uh, two sections. There's a sort of a ground level where uh, you see three goblins, gerblins, uh, all sitting around a fireplace roasting uh, the leg of something. It's bestial in nature. It's not like a dude. Not like a dude foot or something. Um, <laughs> this and then, room that I'm in. Yeah. Would you say it's spooky or beautiful? Um, or beautifully it's, spooky or if spookily you, beautiful? If you were a Gerblin, you would actually find it like a pretty chill den to like. So is this like the break in. room? It, yeah, you get yeah. It's a, it's the Gerblin <laughs> break room. Uh, there's, some, there's some like OSHA posters up. 
So I've been like, make sure to wash your hands. It's cold and flu season. Oh, right. Right. Danny's been microwaving mutton in here. Gross. <laughs> All right, what's uh, the second? What's the second? Uh, so then there's a sort of natural stone staircase leading up to uh, uh, an escarpment, a stage, uh, about 10 feet off the ground. It's not an actual stage, but uh, there, there is a, a second level, a loft, if you will, uh, in this room. Uh, and up there you see uh, a, another goblin that's just sort of uh, sitting around, rummaging through a, a crate. Uh, and next to him, uh, almost on the edge of this stage, you see uh, an unconscious human man. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, and the three goblins are are talking to each other, dicking around. Uh, the the goblin that's up on the stage uh, is just sort of ignoring them and, and rummaging through this crate. Do we have access to that stage? I mean, is there? A- uh, there's a there's a natural staircase that's leading up onto it. Yeah. I have a question. Is the is the room... I'm trying to visualize it. Is the room such that if we were to interact with the goblins on one of the levels, the other ones would definitely be, like, be aware of what we're oh, doing? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, They are, they are it, not that far away. Is okay. it lit by anything but the campfire? Uh, there are some, there are some uh, torches on the wall. Mm. Fatty torches. You know those torches that are like... They have like fat that burns on the top of it. No, okay. I got you. Fatty so torches. just to... How many goblins are... are three uh, on the floor. Three on the floor. One up with the captor, captive. Right. Oh, what's the captive? We There's a know. sleeping human man. Oh. Now, is that on a level above us or below he, us? What celebrity does he most resemble? <laughs> Good question. He looks a lot like... Say John Goodman. John... Huh? No. Say John Goodman. Say John Stamos. He looks a lot like Tom Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> so John is, actually, it, that's the exact middle between John Stamos and John Goodman. <laughs> I said that's Arnold. the median... That's the mean of John Goodman and John Stamos. <laughs> um, so, yeah, please don't make me describe any more shit in this room. Okay. Great. okay I just want to note that you said we have access from where we are in that passageway to that stage area, right? The passageway opens up onto the floor level. Then there Great. is a, 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 a slope that leads up onto the stage. Okay. So I assume, has, has Taco come back and relayed all this to us? I mean, he it's would have to, to Taco. Get, yeah, it's, yeah. You let Taco be Taco. You guys, so... Whenever I, I am explaining a scene like this where one of you have, has split off, the others, you guys need to understand that you don't possess this knowledge. Gotcha. Right. You can't rush in there and like blindly th- like throw a shot at a, a character that you don't know is there, but, but Taco does. Okay. Gotcha. I'll wave them over. Okay. They are uh, going to uh, – they are we're also so going to need to make stealth checks. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Been a lot of faith in us here. 17 on mine. Well, you have disadvantage, so you need to roll again and use the lower result. Okay. God. 11. Okay. 10 was my lower. Okay. Uh, You actually, all three managed to beat the, I'm using my original check, which was not so great. Okay. Uh, So you all three managed to beat it. The three of you are sort of on this, uh, the precipice of this room. Now, okay, so since we have the drop on these guys right now. Do we still have to roll for initiative? Uh, so you do, but in a scenario like this, you can get what's called a surprise round, where when you can actually manage to do what you guys have done, which isn't easy, you get to take a round of combat. Uh, everybody who has a uh, surprise gets to take a round of combat before the regular like combat order begins. So here's what I would like to do. Okay. I have an idea. My motion to taco, I used... Uh, intricate hand signals to relay that what I want to do is I want to rush in past the goblins on the floor to underneath the edge of this stage thing and see if I can get in position where he could mage hand the human off the edge and let me catch him. I think mage hand can only interact with about 10 pounds. And um, Tom Arnold, as you guys can probably intuit more uh-huh. than weighs significantly. I don't want to call the dude overweight because no. it seems like he works really hard to maintain that. And he did look good on uh, Running Wild with Bear Grylls. He looked amazing on Running Wild with Bear I, Grylls. I have a slight amendment. I think Travis's plan is good, but how about if we attack the guys on the floor, giving him a chance to... My to only that? worry is my only worry is that if we don't eliminate the, the guy holding Tom Arnold prisoner, 
that he might do. So- I don't know what the situation yeah, is. Yeah, we got I don't, hostage. I don't want a, him to take a shot at Tom Arnold or have Tom Ar- Arnold as a bargaining chip. If I go first, if I attack and distract them, giving Travis a chance to get there in one move. Why don't I just shoot the guy holding Tom Arnold prisoner with magic missile? There you go. That works too. <laughs> how, about I just, how about I'm just going to shoot him with magic missile now? All in all, I like all three parts of this plan. Taco, magic missile, Merle, guys on ground. I'm going to run up to the precipice. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I want the three of you to go ahead and roll initiative then, and we can get into it. All right. Mine is 11. 19. Mine is zero. You rolled a... You rolled a one okay. with a minus one initiative. <laughs> Dad's like myself after, right after I graduated college. <laughs> Dad, uh, what we don't know about Merle is he has uh, narcolepsy. <laughs> Just look back <laughs> and he's sleeping. Okay. Uh, is Merle okay. holding a bong? Is that a bong? <laughs> <laughs> Merle, put down the burrito. Top of the order is Magnus. <sighs> What would you like to do? Um, so in this surprise round, I can wait and let the two of them go first and then do my action. Uh, so if you do that, you are permanently moving yourself back in the order. Oh, really? It's not just for the first round? Right. There's an established order of, of, of play now. If you want to delay your turn, you can do that and pop it back in wherever it is. But then that's just where you are from that point on. Okay, well, I guess since we're on a surprise and I'm not worried about them doing anything, I'm just going to run for the precipice. But we have surprise. Why don't you move yourself back in the order, like he said, Trav, and let the two of us do you know launch magic missile and let me attack the guys, and then you'll be if able. If I to- can eliminate that magic missile, you may not have to worry about Tom. Okay, fair. Yeah, I'm going to let Taco go first. Okay, so I do a very polite like after you gesture. Um, so who the fuck is going? And please do it. I, I'm going. I'm using magic missile. Okay, so you sweep around the corner and levy a, a shot. Magic Missile, you don't actually need to attack with that, right? You're just burning a spell slot to use it? Uh, I create three glowing darts. Each dart hits a creature of your choice within range that you can see. A dart deals 1d4 plus 1 force damage to his target. Okay. They all strike simultaneously, and I can direct them to hit one creature or several. I'm going to have them all three of them hit the fool uh, holding Tom Arnold prisoner, because I don't fucking cotton to that. Yeah. Okay. You uh, lay off of okay, Mr. So Stupid. Listen, here's the amounts. Four, two, two. All right, so eight damage? Yeah. Okay. Uh, he is... Consider him surprised. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, he immediately stops what he's doing, clearly, because you just knocked him back a bit, uh, and, and he rallies and gets up on his feet and yells something in goblinish. You uh, You speak goblin, right? Yeah, what's Taco. he say? He says, uh, ow! So, um... <laughs> it's quite the wordsmith, our little goblin. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Who's next? Uh, well, so it, I'll go. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. That didn't kill him? No. No. He's not dead. Um, but since I can't get up on the stage, I'm gonna shoot it with my short bow. Okay, alright. So, same dude. Okay. Uh, crit 20. Holy shit, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm really good at D and D. Yeah, okay. got those um, all twenty die sides. So too. on a crit, yeah. it was our first crit attack, I believe. Uh-huh. Uh, you basically roll your damage dice twice. Oh, terrific! But I don't get the automatic like. No. Okay, great. Yeah, and you add your so, modifier, but you only do that once. Okay, so I just need to. If it's one d six plus two, I'm going to roll one d six twice. Yeah. So three and six. Plus two, so eleven. Eleven. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, he uh, he falls over the edge and dies. Yeah. All right. I'm going after the guys on the floor. I'm going after the one on the left, the one that was uh, eating off the haunch. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it was uh, the, it was on the spit. So in well, he was for reaching it. for it. Yeah, he yeah. was reaching for it. Yeah, greedy he's, bastard. <laughs> he's got a powerful hunger. Greedy, greedy bastard. And I'm going after him with my warhammer. Okay. So that's so you- seventeen. Okay, yeah, that's a hit. Okay, and then I roll for how much damage? With an eight, correct? Whatever it says there on the sheet. Well, I did Ugh. three. Okay. What happens, right. Griffin? Uh, he's, he is uh, phased. But he is not unfazed by that. Uh, he uh, takes the hit and immediately sort of stands back up. And he's a little bit imposing now. 
because oh, you my. know this is i think the first time you haven't one hit killed somebody so uh you don't know what's what's gonna happen next you one of you might be attacked wouldn't that be not what uh, Gee, I wonder who that's going to be. The guy that made him drop the haunch, maybe? Maybe. My uh, haunch. <laughs> that's one of the best haunch. Uh, oh, I have man. So, I have so few pleasures in life. <laughs> <laughs> that was my grandfather's haunch. He gave it to me. <laughs> uh, we're moving back to the top of the order. It's actually the goblin's turn since oh. Travis delayed. Uh, there what are they, oh, oh, three crazy. goblins. Um Perfect. The one that actually did just take that hit is going to swing right back at you, uh, Merle. Yeah. Mm. And they are going to roll fucking clown shoes. Nine? Is that going to do it? I have an armor class of 18. So, so no. That's half of it, so clearly no. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, they, uh, their attack is, is buffeted away by your, your heavy hide. Um, yeah. Arr. One of them is going to uh, rush at Magnus and uh, try and attack him. That is a 19 plus. That's a 23. Yeah, that's going to hit. Ow. And they do 4 plus 2. They do 6 slashing damage. 6 slashing damage, you say? One of the other goblins is going to try and scurry up the wall towards Tom Arnold. No. A 15 Ooh. plus their, what would that be? I don't think you need to tell us these rolls. I think that kind of ruins the illusion. Okay. He scurries up the wall towards Tom Arnold uh, and grabs him by the scruff of the neck and hangs him over the the edge of the stage and says, put your weapons down. Damn it. <sighs> this but, but, actually, only, but only I know that he said that, right? He's actually speaking in common. So Ooh. the three of you can understand it. Does he look like Common? He looks exactly like Common. But oh, that's common. a badass goblin right yeah. there. He looks gotcha. super cool. He says, the three of you strike me as businessmen. Is that a fair assumption? He sounds like Kelsey Grammer, and he looks like Common. He's a one hell of a goblin. <laughs> I, I love business. I don't think anybody in this room wants to get stabbed any more than we already have. <laughs> I have a a proposition for you. Uh, okay. Hit us. <laughs> I will let you leave this cave with your berry blue jeans, alive and unharmed, if you do me one small favor. Uh, what is it? I want you to depose our current employer, whose name is Clark. <laughs> <laughs> he says... I, I want you to help me help you help me. <laughs> what I will it take you? to get you to murder my boss today? I need you to murder Clark for me. And I know you're wondering, what's in it for me? I've already told you this. It is Barry Blue Jeans. <laughs> I will give you Barry Blue Jeans alive and to, well. To, I, I, I asked the other two uh, people in the group if they have any idea who Barry Blue Jeans is or care. I'm almost certain he was uh, was his face's buddy. He was. That was the mercenary he hired. Okay. Oh, right. So he's All a right. mercenary. Now, um, ho- excuse me, sir. Goblin, sir. Yes. What? Why? I'm sorry. What is your name? I, I, I how rude of me. Uh, Magnus Burnside's the hammer. Well, the now. Hold on. I, I've picked up a nickname since last week. <laughs> <laughs> In this cave, you picked up a. A nickname in the cave. No, I just remembered it from a long time ago. <laughs> Flashback. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, yes. What and what I, is your name, sir? Uh, my name. My name is. No, course, not you. Oh, sorry. I know your name. You can call Goblin, me. Sir. You can call me Yemik. 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 The Gerblin. Yemik. Why? Yemik. The. Why do you want us to depose Clark? Is it a power grab? Uh, let's call him a new hire. A, tr- a transfer from uh, the home office. The home office, yes. Uh, let's just say that there are certain Gerblins in, in this uh, institution who are not Clark's biggest fan. And the other two goblins mm-hmm. on the floor are like, yeah, fuck that guy. For real, though. For cool, real, though. Cool. Uh, I have a question. I hate to interrupt. Yes. Is it far away? 
Oh no, it's in, it's it's in this very cave, uh, in a, in a uh, lofty antechamber. Uh, where, where were you educated, sir? You are very well spoken. I went to Harvard. That's excellent. excellent. Fucking patronizing. Excellent. No, I'm, see right I'm respectful. That. On the uh, on the other side, we could continue this fight, and I will drop Barry Blue Jeans to his death. I, I frankly, I see this as win win for everyone. I agree wholeheartedly, especially Barry. <laughs> Especially <laughs> Barry. It seems like you get what you want, and uh, we'll get what we want. You can see uh, Barry Blue Jeans now that he's sort of holding him over the edge. You can see him illuminated by the uh, fire a little bit, and he is—he is, is, a, he is, is he just, alive. He is breathing, but he's beat to shit. He is—he—he—he uh, he, he looks real, real messed up. I just don't see what we get out of this. Well, it's what we were going to do anyways, right? We're going to take out the the boss man and. Uh, and we, it seems like we... I thought we were just delivering her. something. But we need Barry Blue Jeans to find out what happened to the you other You do team. need, oh, that's every, a everyone needs a Barry Blue Jeans. <laughs> All right, I say we agree to his terms. Oh, oh. Uh, uh. But first, before we agree to anything, I am going to need Barry Blue Jeans brought back over yeah. the edge. I need some some indication that this is not a trap. I'm pro- I'm not going to murder Barry Blue Jeans. Pull him, unless- back, oh, pull him back from over the edge and we could talk about this. And would he be of any use in our, you know, efforts against Clark? Not at this point. Oh, he's he not was- he's not in scrap and shape. Yeah, he's um Well, then just leave him on the stage there and come on down and join us, big fella. He uh he he rests him on the edge of the stage. He's no longer hanging over it, but he is he is right there. He could be kicked over fairly easily. What happened to Barry's traveling companion? Uh, I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was alone, riding two horses, astride two horses. He's a mountain of a man, as you can tell. Okay. All right. Now, uh, uh, Dungeon Master. Yeah. Do I need to heal Taco, or will we rest and he will naturally heal? I'm not hurt. No, I'm hurt. I'm good. I meant, I meant uh, Magnus. No, I'll be fine. It's up to you guys. I, if Magnus spent his hit dice, he probably doesn't have any more. I don't know. You could spend one of your, your spell slots to heal him um, if, you, if you want to do that. What do you say, big fella? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. All right. I, um, screw it. Yeemaw. Uh, Meemaw. Uh, what yeemik. was his name? Uh, Meemaw. Uh, yeemik. <laughs> yeemik. Um, may we rest by your fire and partake of some of this delicious looking haunch uh, before <laughs> we move on to kill Karg. No, I am going to need you to uh, to get this show on the road, as they say, as we say in Harvard. <laughs> I brought Haunch Helper. What's in the box? Uh, stuff. Go fucking kill Clark. <laughs> 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 All right, where do we go? Uh, oh, you can you can find him uh, across the overpass. We had that overpass put in uh, earlier this year in a, a little bit of cave renovation. It's quite nice, don't you think? All right, fine. Let's go. I say we go back over the overpass into yeah. the other chamber yep. where we heard the waterfall. Maybe we'll have an angle on him. Sure. That's what we're sure. talking about, right? Selling it. Okay. okay. Goodbye. Have fun. Have fun. Bring me his head. <laughs> so when we get back on the overpass, okay. I'm going to turn to Taco and Merle and say, I don't trust this situation. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> okay, cool. I just want to make sure we're Great all Great job, same page. Angela Lansbury. I don't know how you... <laughs> Piece that one together. He seems so nice. <laughs> he clumbered that, that one. Is there some way for us to to kill both Clark and this dude? Oh, yeah, we're going to. Yeah, we're okay, killing cool. everybody. Totally. I thought okay, that was great. implied. I Listen, hope we hit level soon two as, by soon killing as he the turns, guy. As soon as Meemok turns his back. Yemek! Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Did he hear that? We're going to snuff him. It's near. Okay, cool. <laughs> the voice of God just yelled Dad's his name. Dad's talking about murdering me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Magnus is all about Magnus is about action, not planning. Yeah. So now, you, God you, you point me in. I am, a, I am brute force. I am a blunt weapon. You point me in the direction. Yeah, Let's go yeah, in that yeah. other room right. and go kill him. The direction him. of the waterfall. Go. Uh, you, you guys move across the overpass. You move uh, through a large chamber. Uh, you are on a, a ledge fairly high up on this chamber, and you look down, and you can see 
uh, uh, two sort of uh, man-made pools of water uh, that are uh, basically built out of giant towers of logs that are sort of arranged into walls that are damming up where the waterfall is coming from. Uh, and then you see on the front of each pool, uh, they are sort of back-to-back uh, a gate. And you think that that gate is what was dropped and flooded the uh, flooded the cave earlier. Um, gotcha. So you count your lucky stars that they didn't drop the second gate on you uh, and, f- and flush you out again. Uh, you see a couple goblins down there, but they are uh, sort of busy repairing the, the first gate that they dropped to flood you guys out, and they, they don't really see you. Um, so you can continue on if you want, and unless you want to like jump down there and murder them too. Um, How far is it down there? Uh, it's about uh, it's about fifteen feet down. Yeah. I'm good continuing on. Yeah, let's just move on. I don't okay, know. Uh, you keep uh, sort of creeping along the edge, and uh, you come to the entrance of uh, another chamber. Um, you can't see especially far inside unless you get a little bit closer. Uh, but you hear a, a deep baritone voice shouting orders. Uh, and, Does he sound uh, rather clargy? He sounds clargish. He sounds like you don't want to cast aspersions. And you don't want to judge a book by the, by its cover. But it sounds mm-hmm. like the voice of a, a creature that would probably be known as Clark. You can only hear that um, because the other sound uh, that you can hear is this deafening roar of this waterfall that is feeding this this stream. So we can see Clark. Uh, the the chamber is up uh, a ways, up some some ruined stairs uh, that have have seen better days. Um, so if you're careful, and I'm assuming you're being careful, you can you can make out uh, a few shapes. You see uh, one figure that is absolutely massive, much 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 bigger than the goblins that you have uh, uh, been experiencing in this cavern. Um, and that is about the only shape that you can make out. There's a few sort of natural stone pillars, uh, in, in that room. Um, but unless you climb up those stairs and get closer, you're not going to be able to see much. Clark is facing your direction. He just can't really make you out, um, over, over this staircase. Okay. Listen, guys, here's what I'm thinking. What if rather than try to fight Clark? We see if we can trade the information that we have in exchange for Barry. Like tell him that... Say, we know that he has someone in his organization trying to... uh, Who asks us to kill him. We'll let him in on that, but he has to promise to let Barry go with us. I like that. Dungeon Master? Yeah. Um, So geographically... Mm Mm-hmm. The very first room we encountered when we entered with the wolves chained up and yeah, there was yeah, yeah. a chimney. Yeah. Where would that chimney line up with the two rooms we've been in up here in the overpass? It was on the right and you were on the right side of the cave. So it's a logical gotcha. assumption that maybe that chimney opens up into there. Gotcha. What do you I, like, I like Taco's idea, but I think we need to uh, work from a position of strength. Why don't we do something that makes him think we're real, real badasses? So he will uh, think twice and maybe consider the offer. Um, like, could I use my uh, the, the spell I used before to illuminate uh, the axe and to, you know, like cast that spell on something to, like as a visual? You think this dude's never seen light before? The no, light spell? but I mean, if something all of a sudden starts to glow. That's what they teach kids. They teach kids light in kindergarten. <laughs> No, I think this is a good idea. Yeah, I love it. Okay, and I'll I'll cast at the same time. I'll use a cantrip. I'll use uh, my my abilities of prestidigitation, and uh, I'll create a shower of sparks. Okay, and and I'll build a chair with my carpentry tools. Yeah, okay. So I th- say you draw a bead on Big Boy with your short bow. Okay. Yeah, I so- don't think he's going to be threatened by us. We're level one. He doesn't know that. That's why we're firing That's off true. the fireworks. Griffin, you're not going to tell him, are you? Uh, no. So, are you guys doing this now? Yes, we're okay. doing it simultaneously. The three of you, the three of you, walk magnificent seven style, shoulder to shoulder, <laughs> into this room. 
that you're shooting light beams all over the place like they're in a Daft Punk concert and Justin's <laughs> showering sparks all over the place and Travis strikes and I'm in calling and, out to him so I, yeah. I'm like hello friend no don't no, call him friend no 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 other way yo fat ass hey no, no 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 sit one in the middle uh, hey jerk <laughs> okay uh, and, and Travis, you just sort of strike an imposing pose with your short bow drawn. Um, and then from uh, the left side of the cave next to the entrance you've just walked through, uh, a wolf charges and attacks uh, Merle. So uh, let's all roll initiative. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that won't work. 19 again. Four. 14. Okay. So, sounds like a lot of wolves. <laughs> uh, wolf number 16 is going to come. <laughs> uh, so this wolf uh, gets a surprise round on you. Excellent. Great. Uh, he is attacking Merle, uh, and he is going to try and bite at your neck region. He rolls a 7 plus 4. He rolls an 11. I have 18. I'm not going to do it. Uh, you just kind of throw him off, uh, just using your neck muscles. It's a, it's amazing. <laughs> You're like Terry Crews. <laughs> you just sort of flex, and the wolf goes flying. Uh, okay. Uh, so that was the surprise round. Clark is like amazed by your your <laughs> pyrotechnics. Whoa! He says, um, Clark is amazed by your power." So he is John Goodman. All right, now we got John Goodman. I'm John Goodman. (laughs) um, You don't actually, uh, you guys aren't entirely sure what he is. You've never seen uh, uh, anything like him. Uh, But he's not a goblin. He's he's definitely not a goblin. Is he humanoid? He is humanoid. He is furry. Uh, He's about six and a half feet tall. He is muscle bound. Uh, he, uh, he looks, he looks pretty badass. Does he look, like, more muscly than me? Nothing's more muscly oh, than nobody's you. Nobody's more muscly than you, you the sweetheart. most muscly boy, aren't you? I mean, more than Magnus, not more than Travis McRae. Is it my turn um, yet? Uh, it is Magnus's turn. We're to the top of the order now. Can you ask him to call off the wolves? Can I roll a quick animal handling check to see if there's any possibility of, like, controlling the wolf, like befriending my animal friends uh you want to make an animal handling check to see if you can call off this wolf um yeah sure go right ahead or i mean i guess overall i should say i let me explain what's in the room so you have this wolf that has just attacked you uh there's a fire pit sort of in the middle of the room uh that's just sort of hot hot coals and embers that uh, this this that Clark was sort of standing behind, uh, and then in the corner you see this that the the entrance to that chimney that you walked by earlier with the wolves in it, uh, and by that you see two more goblins. I can I make a suggestion? We've already tried to establish ourselves as badasses. This wolf attacked us. Kill it, Magnus. But, but I want a wolf, buddy. All right. Um, I love this. I love this narrative thread of you trying to befriend everything that tries to kill you. <laughs> I, I listen. I love animals. Yeah. I, then I want to kind of do something badass if I'm going to take this wolf out. What do you What are I'll, you thinking about? Can I double attack? Not yet. Maybe someday. Then I am going to. You could try and pick him up and throw him onto the fire pit. Yeah, that one. Let's do that. <laughs> I'm going to okay. do that. I'm going to hoist the wolf over my head and throw him in the fire. Well, you, the, you'll, you will have to make a couple checks there. Yeah, uh, no, I'm good with that. Dumb check. See if it's dumb to do. I prefer action. <laughs> I'll make, let me make the dumb VR. check. Oh, man, it's a critical 20. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so you will, uh, you will have to make a strength, we'll say a strength contest against this wolf. So this wolf is going to try and wriggle to try and get out of, uh, try and get out of gotcha. the grasp. So this is just strength. Yeah, yeah. You, oof, yeah. Okay, I got... A 20, Trav? Was it a 20? No, it, it was 15 plus 4, 19. Oh, 19. okay, one off. Uh, so, yeah, you managed to hoist this wolf into the air. Yeah! And now what do I... Throw him! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna throw him! 
Uh, yeah, I think I, that's a thrown attack. Well, you're, you're you were only a few feet from this fire pit, so you managed to uh, toss this wolf into the fire. Uh, the the wolf is going to try and land on his feet. Uh, he's going to make a uh, we'll say a dexterity saving throw. Uh, he does. He gets a he gets a seventeen. So he uh, he manages to uh, he lands in the fire and he takes uh, he takes we'll say one d four point of damage. Uh, he takes three damage, and he's uh, he's very perturbed, and it smells amazing in this room. <laughs> for a second. Um, um, and as a free action, I'm going to point at Clark and yell, "Call him off!" You threw my wolf in the fire, and I'll do worse if you don't stop him. Ooh! But he's my favorite wolf, and you threw <laughs> then, him in the fire, though. <laughs> then call him off, or lose him forever. Ooh! Ooh. But he's my. <laughs> Just you do it. You threw him in the fire. <laughs> he attacked my friend. I say we're eating. I attacked your friend. Then you'll meet the same fate. Oh, you man. can't pick me up. I'm way bigger than the wolf was. <laughs> and then I say, fellas, fellas, fellas. We came here to talk. You should have thought about that before throwing my dog in the fire. Well, you shouldn't have had your dog jump at my ass. <laughs> <laughs> you got your ass in my dog. You got your dog in my ass. I don't think my dog could fit in an ass. <laughs> you haven't seen this ass. <laughs> I have. We've gotten off track. <laughs> this is, listen. This. He's not kidding around here. Uh, the are we, I have a question. Are, are we allowed to talk if it's not our turn? Uh, yeah, sure. That's a free, it's a free action. Well, we do gonna, free actions whenever, huh? Well, I mean, I'm not going to silence you guys if you want to if you want to crack wise i'm not going to say shush it's not your turn okay um do you want to say something to yeah, clark you can chime in here let if me, you want to let me try please oh good yeah is that good <laughs> okay you've convinced me <laughs> <laughs> um no that's not what happens uh it's uh next in the order is the wolf he's going to scurry out of the fire pit uh and he's going to tackle uh he's gonna he's gonna make a running attack at uh i just want to say travis i wish you'd just tried your animal handling and instead of attacking us. or just killed it yeah i mean this wolf was actually supposed to be your pet but you this is, uh, th- no. this is perfect now we've got a flaming wolf that's great that's good now it's a wolf but it's on fire uh, the, I see, he's, more, he's more like a smoldering wolf the wolf uh jumps at magnus he uh got a 16 to attack oh, my armor class is 17 oh uh, so he uh, he is unsuccessful. He's very sad. Uh, the two goblins are up next. They are each going to pull out short bows. Uh, one is going to fire at Magnus. One is going to fire at Taco. Um, Magnus will do you first. Uh, Nineteen to AC. Give me one second. Sorry. What happened? Somebody- somebody was checking his fantasy football score. I was. No, I uh, as a protection fighter. Um, when a creature you can see attacks a target other than you that is within five feet of you, you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll. You must be wielding a shield. So I'm going to say there's disadvantage against the attack on Taco. Okay, but this attack was on you? Yeah, and that hit. Okay. That hit real good. 19? Yeah. 19. Uh, 3 plus 2, 5 uh, piercing damage. So not great. Not great for me. I'm down to 2. Okay. Uh, the other attack against Taco. So you're imposing disadvantage. How often can you do that? As far as I know, whenever. Okay. There's no limit. Uh, so the first attack is a crit. So good that you did that. Uh, the other attack is a 12. Uh, 12 yeah. versus AC? It's e- equal. Uh, so yeah, that's a hit. And they do... But at least it wasn't a crit hit. Yeah, that would have been pretty bad. They only rolled a 1 plus... Two, three damage. Three piercing damage to Taco. Uh, that is it for the goblins. Who rolled a 14 for initiative? Uh, it was, Magnus. Nope. No. It was either Merle or Taco. Uh, I had a... Yeah, I had a 14. So okay, great. you're up. Um, you got... Uh, you got Clark, you got two goblins over by the chimney, and you got uh, a dog by over by Magnus. Um... All right, I cast Charm Person on Clark. Okay, interesting. What do I uh, What do I do about that? I will tell you. You give Justin presents. 
You, uh, I'm going to attempt to charm a humanoid. You must make a wisdom saving throw. If it fails the saving throw, it is charmed by you until the spell ends or until you or your companions do anything harmful to it. The charm creature regards you as friendly as a friendly acquaintance. Okay. Nice. Uh, what do I have to save against? Wi- wisdom. Save against wisdom. But there should Which be a number. A... There should be a number that you have that is my target uh, to be. Right. The saving throw DC to resist a spell you cast is 13. 13. Okay. Um, and I'm making a wisdom saving throw. This guy has plus zero to wisdom, so I need to roll a 13 or better. I roll a two. <laughs> so consider Clark charmed. Clark is this last? Uh, until we attack him. Okay. Or no, sorry, sorry, sorry. It lasts an hour. Okay. Clark, call them off. Call, sorry, who? All the bat, <laughs> call, call the wolves off. <laughs> oh, oh, sure. Hey, uh, Percival, come back. Come to daddy. Percival scampers back to, uh, to Clark's side. Can we put him out what? first? Can we put him out since he was on fire? Oh, he's not on fire. He's fine. Okay, okay good. good. Uh, Clark, my name is Taco. <laughs> it's, a pl- it's a pleasure. It's a. It's well, really, really super great to I feel like we've known each other for ages. Right? I feel right. that way too. Th- Do you need a- any money or any? Can I just start? Can I give you all of the things I have? There will be time for that. Listen, we have uh, a sort of a situation we wanted to loop you in on. Um, <laughs> we. Uh, Do you guys uh, want to treat you? Can, you? You've been in my cave for a while now. Do you want to uh, some oolong? Uh, no, no oolong for us, thanks. We don't have much time. Actually, about 59 minutes. If we were to <laughs> so listen, uh, listen, uh, 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 we have a situation. One of your employees, uh, Yahweh, said, told us that... I don't uh, think the Jewish God is, uh, <laughs> under my employee. I think it's, it's Wee Man. Mimo? We Mimo? Wee Man? Wee Man, yes. Wee Man. Uh, uh, he told us... Uh, first off, he has uh, our friend Barry Blue Jeans held captive. You know Barry. You that know was, Barry. I did. Yes, I. I thought we figured. I'm, listen, I may water, have water under the water bridge. Under the yeah, bridge well, let's get past it. Uh, listen, uh, your friend uh, wanted us to. I don't know. This is going to be hard to hear. Are you sure ability. you don't want any tea? I have a delicious Earl Grey. Fifty-eight that I just... minutes, Clark. Try to okay. stay focused. We're good. Uh, <laughs> he tr- he tried. He wanted us to believe it or not. Kill. Well, you kill you. <laughs> uh, that doesn't sound like. Are we talking about the same Yemek? There are. There are. Uh, sorry, I think I understand what the problem is. I employ several Yemeks. Clog, look at me. It's Taco. <laughs> this is Taco talking. I. Would I lie to you? Huh? I guess I've known all along. Yeah, yeah, Look I at that know. face. Look at that face. Look at this face, Clog. It's me, Taco. Listen. So, here's the thing. We want Barry back. We want to kill this bad guy the f- that wants to kill you. We want our friend Barry. And we wa- we'd like some gold. Like <laughs> some gold. Like a little gold. For our trouble. For our trouble. And if, and if it's not such a big deal, it would be great to know what happened to our other friend. What do you say, Clark? Gundren. 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 Clark, yeah. Clark, what do you say? I think that we can come to a very uh, a- agreeable conclusion to this entire misunderstanding. Give me give me just one moment. Uh, sure. He, uh, he goes over to... Uh, uh, well, it looks like a desk that a bugbear would use. He's a <laughs> he's a bugbear, uh, and he uh, he pulls a uh, sort of a rock out of the the wall so that there's like a small uh, small hole in the wall. And he says, uh, "Yemek, can I see you in my office, please?" <laughs> um, and he puts the rock back in. Uh, and about uh, okay, while we're waiting before yeah. he comes, Clark, just a heads up. He's gonna know something's up when he sees us. Oh, so. don't no, please listen. Yemix talks a big game, but he's he's <laughs> really as uh, he's as he's as sweet as cherry pie. You have nothing to worry about. Trust right. me. My I friend. say we move to either side of the door. Uh, how about if we pretend we're captives or dead? Oh, I'm can telling... we feign deadness? Can we feign death? Uh, y- yeah, we all lie down. I lie down on the ground. 
I, t- I t- I'm telling you this this level of chicanery is not. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. All right. Um, Come on, Taco, stay up. I do feel like you're embarrassing yourself a little bit, but if you want to lie on the floor and play child games, <laughs> yeah, it's... tell it to Can my I... ghost. Okay. Can I play with your dog? Uh, absolutely. Oh my God, he won't give up on the dog. Absolutely not. You did throw him in a. a listen, I I love you guys. You're my you oldest. Taco. You're my oh, oldest you and dearest friends. You threw my dog in a goddamn fire. <laughs> Oh um, uh, yeah, that was a misunderstanding. Uh, okay, so what are you? What, the, what are the three of you doing? All right, let's. I, uh, I say we stand we're to the waiting. side. Of yeah, the at least stay out of sight. To don't give him a chance. Oh, to... that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll stay on the other side of the door, so he doesn't see us as soon as he walks in. Okay, um, Yimik walks in with uh, with uh, his the two other goblins that were in that room with him. Uh, uh, they they walk into the room. They do not see you as they walk in. Um, Is Barry with them? Barry is not with them. He's back um, on the stage. He's back on the stage. But the three Where he uh, belongs. The three goblins uh, who walk and have their weapons drawn. Uh, and and Clark goes, uh, "Oh, Yemek, I I have heard the most fascinating story about you." Um, and Yemek draws a a short bow and fires around off at Clark. Wait, hold on, can I use my protection for Clark? <laughs> yeah, sure. We, we'll okay, say great. that. Okay, so you're imposing. The first roll was an 18. The second roll is a 17, uh, which hits his armor class, uh, and he takes he takes four points of damage. And Clark uh, reels from that shot and says, "Oh, so it's true." Uh, and pulls <laughs> oh, out. I see how it is. Uh, and and pulls out a. Uh, Pulls out a giant morning star in one hand and a javelin in the other and looks like he's getting ready for uh, business. We're going to hop back into uh, initiative. The, uh, the two goblins that were in the chamber before uh, walk over behind Yemek and uh, align with, uh, with this seditionist movement. Uh, and I believe the last person to go was Taco. Uh, so Clark is actually next in the order. He is going to bear down on Yemek with this uh, big, big morning star and rolls a 19, which hits uh, for 2d8 plus Ooh. 2 damage. That's a 7. That's real glad we charmed that dude. Uh, a 6. Uh, 7 plus 6 is 13. Plus 2 is 15 piercing damage. He crushes uh, Yemek uh, into the ground. And the other four goblins uh, look a little bit worried about that. Uh, and next in the order is Merle. Is Magnus still at only two life points, two hit points? I, I mean, I've got second wind if I can keep from getting hit. I'm feeling fine. Don't worry about me. Action, action, action. I, well, I don't want you to die. We're trying to make a podcast here. I'll be fine. Magnus will be fine. Either that well, or his then, brother Magnus will show up. <laughs> then how would I proceed if I wanted to leave the cave and go back to Barry Blue Jeans and try to heal him? You could do that. You'd be splitting up the party. Don't do that. You got you got Clark in here. He's still charmed, and you got four goblins left. Um, and, how and much the, longer in Clark's charm? Uh, each each round of combat takes about six seconds. So he is, he's we're fine. You got plenty of time on that clock. Sorry, Trav. I'm gonna I'm gonna heal you. I mean, you well, shouldn't you apologize. <laughs> uh, How dare you, you turd! I'm, but here's the thing: Do I need to burn another spell slot? Yeah, your heals are based you have- on on your spell slots. So if I use heal here, does that mean I won't be able to cast anything else? Uh, is it, do you only have the two spell slots? Yeah. And yeah, until you take a long rest, you you won't be able to cast anything. All right. Else. Well, I'm gonna cast healing hands. A one. Okay. I add five to it. So Travis gets six. six. Magnus gets six gotcha. hit points back. Gotcha. Feeling fine. You feel lightly refreshed. You feel like you you just applied some bin gay. Gotcha. And then I say triumphantly, "You're welcome." Thanks. I mean, you didn't like sew an arm back on. You healed him for six points of. Let's of see damage. you heal. I do appreciate it. Okay, next. Uh, next in the order, back to the top of the order is Magnus. Then I'm. I mean, I'm going to attack one of the goblins. Okay. Wait, can we tell if Yahweh is dead? He's oh, he's super dead. Okay, great. 
And and by the way, we shouldn't say the sentence out loud. Yahweh is dead. <laughs> Just now, for for future reference, we should avoid saying that sentence out loud. So I would like to roll an intimidation check. Okay. And tell the four goblins that are left, their leader is dead. Lay down your weapons. Okay. What is your uh, what is your Im- intimidation my, skill? My intimidation is plus three. Uh, eighteen. We'll say you're contesting their wisdom. That's a crit. That is not so successful. No, they are not intimidated. In fact, they're... Can I still attack? They look super brave. Um, yeah, sure. Okay, great. Then I'm just going to uh, swing one-handed battle axe at whoever's closest to me. Okay. Uh, that'd be the and one. it kind of goes like this. Lay down your weapons. No! All right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, that's that would be the one on the uh, the the far right there. Um, eighteen. Yeah, that's a hit. One d eight plus four eleven. Yeah, he he is he is cleaved. Cleft. He is cleft. Cleave. Cleaved. Clefted. He's dead. Yes. He he fucking died. Okay, I'll buy a, a listen. I'll buy a thesaurus before we play next time. <laughs> you killed the goblin. Great job. You get twenty <laughs> experience points. Is this what you want? <laughs> <laughs> Do I get 20? No flavor text? Uh, here's some flavor. You killed him as you didn't even think twice about it. You just did it impulsively. You murdered another <laughs> you're, gerblin. You're deeply broken inside. Great job. <laughs> uh, next in the order is uh, the wolf. Uh, the wolf is going to charge at the goblin on the far left. 15, which ties their armor class. That's a hit. 2d4 plus 2. That's uh, 4 plus 3, 7, 9. Uh, he uh, tackles the Goblin on the far left to the ground, and he uh, he stops moving. <laughs> Next in the order is the goblins. Um, there's only two left. That is enough to intimidate them. Uh, one of them runs, uh, turns and, and runs and uh, sort of scurries down that chimney. Uh, another one goes over there uh, and, and tries to get down that chimney, but he gets uh, stuck along the way hilariously. <laughs> um, so uh that can be it you got a goblin stuck in a hole you got clark there still charmed you got a wolf he is enjoying a delicious meal uh and we are out of initiative <sighs> way to go team Woo. good work it was a very unconventional way of tackling that but i like you said you liked that yeah sure so boy i wish i hadn't needed to murder them that was uh <laughs> can i search them uh, a- absolutely. If you want to do that in front of Clark, I think more power <laughs> to you. Clark, uh, let me talk to him. Clark, oh, yeah, buddy. Yeah. Uh, we're, yeah. we're, we're going to search them for valuables. Is that cool with you? I, I, you know, I suppose so. It's going to... Uh, Excellent. Thanks, let, Clark. I uh, appreciate it. Okay. If you, um, yeah, just go right ahead. I, okay, we do it. Okay. Uh, you find in, in Yemek's pocket a, uh, uh, a sack... Full of golden teeth, and uh, you, you assume that that's going to be worth a, a pretty penny, uh, maybe about uh, thirty gold pieces or so. Do we need to sell it, or can I just put down thirty gold pieces? You can just put down thirty gold pieces. All right, split three ways. So, Clark goes. Oh, I f- I forgot. I promised you guys so much, so much <laughs> money. Um, let me and, go. And there was talk of tea. Oh well, yeah, uh, is, it, is it? He gets really excited about that. Do you want? I have so much, and it, it, I, I have a lot to share if it's something you're you actually in with. A cup of oolong would be a delight. Oh, and fantastic. It would go down real smooth. How scones? Do you have scones? Oh, my God. No, I... Oh, my God, I don't... It's no, okay. it's... Uh, I, I can run out and get you some. I, no, no, I'm diabetic. I, I couldn't eat them anyway. <laughs> I just feel so terrible. Um, you just looked like a scone guy, is all. Uh, he, he comes back and... Uh, uh, brings you out the three glasses of the the most delicious, most aromatic oolong tea uh, you have ever tasted. Um, it is enough to level uh, all three of you up to level two. Just drinking this incredible <laughs> tea brings you up to level two. Great. Um, How much time has passed? He also fifty nine minutes and fifty nine seconds. No, uh, it's you're fine. Uh, he also drags out a, a small chest uh, that contains. Uh, a lot of copper and silver pieces in it equal to uh, about 25 gold pieces. There's also a, a two potions of healing in there. Uh, 
Can you make it 24? 24 yeah. gold pieces. Okay, uh, two you. statue, two potions of healing. I'm not going to round that up for you. Uh, and a jade statuette of a frog with tiny golden orbs for eyes worth about 40 gold pieces. Nice. So 64 gold pieces and two potions of healing. Um, the frog statuette is small enough to fit in a pocket or pouch. I'm getting that one straight from the guidebook. Not making that part up. The- I'm glad we don't have to lug a, a six-foot statue around. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Thanks, guide. He says, um, that's, uh, that's about all, all there is, guys. I, uh, I don't feel too bad about that. You just significantly re- reduced my company's overhead. And he laughs. He has a nice, good laugh about that. He does, doesn't he? <laughs> he has a nice, hearty laugh. Well, just think, old buddy, just those many fewer uh, Christmas bonuses you'll have to fork up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, recruitment is a real pain in the old hiney, but uh, you, you, you know uh, it's Clark. Since yes, we're, we're friends here. Um, Absolutely, best friends. I would say. I would say that. What happened? Lovers, to- maybe. Uh, well, <laughs> time will tell. Uh, what happened to uh, 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 Gundren? Gundren. We actually gave him away. <laughs> <laughs> gave him away. Come again. Uh. I guess I can start from the beginning. We were uh, uh, hired, we were contracted to give, uh, to collect, let's say, to acquire uh, uh, Gundren uh, and deliver him to the Black Spider. So uh, that's what we did, and that's where Mm -hmm. he is at, I imagine. what's What's the Black Spider? I don't actually know. I've never met him. Uh, But I do know, I guess he loves dwarves. I guess he, he just, does. I guess he just likes having them. And where and, uh, do you think you can mark on my map here where uh, where you left Gundren? Uh, we took him. We actually uh, delivered him to an envoy uh, to to uh, a representative for Mister for Mister Spider here at this cave. So unfortunately, that is not. Do you have um, a way of contacting the Black Spider? Uh the Black Spider typically contacts me, unfortunately. I do wish I could help you out in this regard, um, but I do not think there's anything I can do for you. Hmm. Okay. Uh, you don't have any healing salves or anything, do you? Just those potions you already I gave did us, just right? give you those potions. Yeah. I, <laughs> okay. Listen, Clark, this yeah. has been so great. I've had a fantastic time, too. I did have to murder my employees. But uh, the but you they know, were going to murder they you. They were it going was, to murder me, weren't I mean, they? You're always right about things, Magnus. Now listen, now, like before you. before we say goodbye, yeah. let's not leave without making plans to get together again. Can we have a hug? No, no, not with a bugbear. No. Can one of you guys give me just a quick hug? I uh-huh. say Magnus. Uh, uh, Magnus. Yeah, sounds like a job for me. Okay. Really nice <laughs> He's always Listen, he loves if animals. There's one thing I know about Magnus. Okay. He loves hugs. Roll your hug die. He, uh, Let's turn this bug bear into a hug bear. And he, <laughs> he takes you in his arms and he cradles you. His fur is so much softer than you thought it was going to be. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Uh, so you, you share an embrace. Uh, you try to disengage. He you is begin to hum gently. He's actually holding you a little bit longer than you probably wanted to be held. Awkward. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know what? Maybe Magnus needs that. He starts moving his hand in small, slow circles <laughs> on the top of your okay, back. Okay, listen, we've got to be going. Look this is at the good, time. isn't it? Yeah. I, I, are you the two of you? Are you sure you don't want a piece of this action oh, also? La- next time, for okay. sure. Um, time is time is running short. <laughs> yeah. you, you are starting to think on this spell, and uh, maybe it's time to head out. All right, here we go. We're Do at- we want to at least think about um, uh, murdering Clark? No, we're no, not going to murder Clark. Not at all. Okay. Buddy. We need to go get Barry Blue we're Jeans. Get Barry get Blue Jeans. Can, now, let me have a discussion uh, with you guys. Uh, can we leave the room first? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so long, friends. Goodbye, Clark. Uh, ah, goodbye, Clark. Should we? God, that was creepy. Use one of our healing potions on uh, Barry, and, and so where it's like not dead weight. Yeah. Well, I, well, why do that? Why don't I just heal him? You don't have any charges left. Well, that's right. You use your right, two yeah. spell slots. Okay, well, let's get back in the room first, because we left him alone yeah, let's with go check dudes. on him. I said we carry him out if we well, need let's to. Get in th- all right, let's get in there. Is he okay, Griffin? Uh, he is. He's, he's lying where, uh, where okay. he, he, he uh, was left by Yemek. Well, can we carry... And I want to I check the crate that Yemek was going through. Uh, okay. Uh, there is, um, mostly it is, uh, some very rough leather armor, um, some clothing, some, some letters, 
uh, you you believe that these are probably very blue jeans possessions. Oh, right on. Okay. So you guys uh, slap slap Barry around a little bit. He uh, he comes to uh, he's he is in horrible shape, but he's not unconscious. He what can, if he's a douche? like he needs to exercise more and eat better. <laughs> um, he is a little bit overweight. Is that what you wanted to hear me say? <laughs> I do. I, I do want to know that Barry's a little chubster. Uh, he is. He is a, a, a solidly put together uh, man uh, in his. You, you'd estimate in his fifties. So he's basically got one foot in the grave, um, age wise. <laughs> if you okay, is he cool. conscious? Uh, he is conscious, and he is. Uh, he is very, very grateful to be alive. Um, although he is, uh, again, I can't stress this enough. He's real fucked up. Okay, listen, I want to go ahead and give this guy a healing potion. This is silly. Okay. I heal it. Uh, you give him a healing potion. He, uh, guzzles it down. And he says, this is, this is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, you kind soul. I will never, ever forget this kindness you've done for me. My name is Barry J. Blue Jeans. <laughs> uh, and I'm ready to kick some goblin ass. Where did they listen, go? Listen, all the asses have been kicked, dear Barry. Where you didn't leave me one ass. <laughs> no, we do. There, have there's your, some stuff out in the weeds if you're really interested in it. We have your clothes. I will take those. Yes, these are my favorite clothes. <laughs> my name's Barry J. Blue Jeans. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, they are blue jeans. So yeah, well, yeah, no shit. How you think? Why you think I, they call me that? Do you yeah, think he a, is a douche. You think they such right. a family name? Barry's a douche. Oh, guys, thank you so much. And again, that healing potion. So great. So smart. Definitely the right move to make. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Wait. Well, what, what do you know about Wait. this black spider? Hold on, hold on. Dude? Where are we right now? Uh, you, are in, you are still in the, the cave. Okay. Are we in the auditorium room with the stage? Yeah. We need to truck it out of the cave because Clark's going to wake up soon and, and he's going to remember what happened and mm-hmm. I don't want to be here when that happens. Okay. Uh, all right. He's, he, Barry Blue Jeans is amenable to that. He's like, yeah, let's get the hell out of this cave. I'm not a big fan of this cave. My name's Barry Blue Jeans. Um, MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.